I'm the Commissar, this is Forged Alliance Forever, and today's game is 1v1 ladder action, head to head, mano a mano, up close and personal. Let's go! Down here, in the red corner, we have Kelly, 1447 rated, and Cybron. Up here, in the blue corner, we have Bob Missilli, 1417 rated, and Seraphim. We saw him quite recently playing in that three-way against Joker and Relia. And the map. Not much reclaim, just little bits dotted about. So getting all these mixes and holding on to them is going to be important, but it looks like this sort of quarter and a bit is very definitely going to go to Bob and this to Kelly. So we might be in for a bit of turtling or we might be in for lots of sneaky drops and raids trying to pick up some of these clusters. I don't know. Reminds me a little bit of the map Festia 7, which was on the ladder for a while and which I believe was designed by Farms. Now, we check this out, and Bob has, as just his second unit out of the gate, built a Selene. Now, Selene can cloak, cloak and stealth, but, and he's done that, so I guess he's using it for intel rather than aggression, but the cloak and stealth only work when it's standing still. However, we can see that he's queued it up here, which is a bit cheeky, because unless in this early stage of the game the only Omni unit is the comm, unless Kelly brings his comm in to see that unit, he won't be able to build on that Hydro. I guess he could, might guess that there's a Selene there and ground fire and arty on it or something, but it could be both a good block and a good source of intel for Bob. Now, after going for the standard 4 mechs Hydro, Kelly has gone for 3 P-Gens and an Air Factory and first Bomber. And Bob has gone for the exact same thing. So, two players, identical strategies. Whose Bomber will do the more damage? At the moment, Kelly has been slightly greedier with his order of pickups, and he hasn't got his Hydro complete yet, but he has got more mixes. How's his power looking? That's actually pretty well balanced, and he's going to get that Hydro up before it stores, so I prefer Kelly's build to Bob's in that regard. Anyway, those bombers we mentioned. Does Bob see the bomber as it flies over his... Yes, he does. So Bob knows already that Kelly has done the same thing that he has. It looks like he's trying to move his bomber so that Kelly doesn't see it, but unfortunately for him, Kelly does see it with his scout that's gone round that way. Now, it's usual when you do a first bomber play to immediately follow the bomber with the scout, so the scout overtakes the bomber and can get you some line of sight. And that's what both players have done. And we can see the scouts going in over the bases and picking stuff up. Bob's has been shot down by Kelly's Inti. And Bob has picked up... Oh, but this Inti has fallen back. And so the bomber might get something done. And this... Oh, but there's another Inti. Is it going to get the drop? This is a lovely clutch of engineers, but Bob moves it very well. Look at that. Look at that. He still loses one though, these two are down into the red, but he loses one and the bomber is shot down before it gets a second pass. Meanwhile, Bob's bomber just landed there for a bit, presumably while the Selene got him some targeting information. Can he get more than the one NG's worth of kill? Let's find out. The Selene dies to a tank. The tank could see it because the Selene was moving. Lovely little turn there, picks up an NG and damages these two Mantis, but immediately it's shot down. So both players, much of a muchness with that. We can see that Kelly has planned to go into the water. I think the water's going to be crucial here. So has Bob. I like the way that these are almost playing mirror images of each other at the moment. 
and Bob, though, has gone for... Oh, and Kelly. Bob and Kelly have both gone for a second bomber. However, Kelly's just got a few more inties up first. So I reckon that Kelly can win air. Question is, what will he lose to this bomber coming in from Bob? This NG looks like an easy pickup. And it is. The Inties are charging in towards it. Will he get this second NG? He does. Nice. And down it goes. Can't even see. Kelly's other bomber must have been shot down by the Inties. So, so far, Bob is winning the air-to-ground damage part of the game. But Kelly has more air. And I think Kelly will be able to stop any more bombers coming in with relative ease. Now, Bob has managed to get slightly more up there thanks to killing off these NGs. You see, Kelly hasn't got any NGs to pick up these mexes at the moment, whereas Bob absolutely has, and he's out here getting these. So, thanks to those fewer NG losses, Bob has more, and his eco is quite significantly ahead, 55 to 47 there. And this will help more. Are these NGs going to come... They're coming here to pick up this expansion. And Bob's also brought his com forward, and Kelly is miles from these mexes. So Bob is definitely going to have an early eco lead. He's also got his naval yard up sooner. Kelly takes out a Celine, but he's going to easily take out the inties from Bob, and Kelly is going to try and make use of his early. He's got a bomber, he's got a jester. Only Cybrans, for the less experienced players, get these T1 gunships, the jesters. They're pretty expensive, but they can get amazing amounts of damage done. This would be the perfect place for a jester. Fly it here, pop, 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 in a couple of seconds, and suddenly Bob's down five NGs. This, however, Bob has chosen to defend with an anti-air defense, and given that he knows he's lost air, I think that's pretty wise. Kelly's creeping another bomber in here, and it's just got past these inties of Bob. He hasn't noticed them. However, he's got more coming out in his base all the time, and these two of that were just landed. Oof. One entry down and a bit of damage done, but the bomber's picked up before it gets a second pass. And the Jester is again going in here. I think it should be out here, picking up... Ah, that's more like it, this bomber. Picking up dudes on the edge, but Kelly is going to fall afoul of this anti-air defence if he lets it go up. He does, however, send in the two Mantis, the two heavily damaged Mantis from earlier, to support it. And they get an NG kill. Oh, but look at that, look at that. The damaged Mantis, Bob just spins around and reclaims them, and just sucks them into the belly of his engineer. That was beautiful play. However, in comes that Jester gunship, and this time Kelly has Inties to defend, and he's also got a bomber in support. However, he's been focusing so much on air to ground that Bob now has more Inties. The Jester takes out one Mex and dies. The bomber dies. I don't think that was worth the price of the Jester for Kelly. And more NGs coming in. NGs? Bombers. Well, also NGs, but that's a lot of NGs that are at risk of the bomb. If Kelly sees them and picks them up. So are these, though. That bomb is going to die before it gets another pass. But, ouch. Four NGs in one pass. That bomber up to... Was that six kills I saw yet? Oh, this is... Okay, this bomber, MVP. 11 kills, of which at least 9 were NGs and 2 vets. It gets taken down, but ouch, that was beautiful from that bomber. Bob, meanwhile, has just come straight through the middle with his com. Where are these NGs going? I imagine, yes, they're going to set up a base here, and Bob is just moving his com to guard them, rather than being offensive with an unsupported com, which I understand. I like this radar. I would like to see another anti-air over here, though. Otherwise, a bomber or a jester could just come in, bomb the radar, bomb the mexes, and be out of range of those things. So an anti-air here would be great for Bob, in my opinion. Kelly is really doubling down on the navy. 
And this one's got T2 queued up just straight. So I reckon that we're going to see Salem's coming across here. Could be amazing. Bob, meanwhile, has used his navy just to put in a couple of units here to deny Kelly from getting into the water. Also takes out a nice coastal mix, but the denial of navy here is what I think is going to be most important for Bob. And I'm surprised, given that he's recognised that, that he isn't trying to get in the water here. Lovely pickup of NG and radar there, but the bomber gets shot down and there's a factory there that can just produce more NG, so... That could have been much worse for Bob. Bob going for point defence here. I don't think he needs that right now half as much as he needs anti-air because Kelly has definitely been going for air. And in fact he's got T2 air right now whereas his land production is just two factories. This one's on the way to T2 and he's going straight for Wagner's but right now... Kelly's actual land force is minuscule, and it's the air, not the land, that Bob needs to be worrying about. Up here. And the bombers from Kelly, they're just unceasing. They take out three of the NGs here, and will he come back and take the last one? No, but he does get a mix, which is going to be quite nice. Decent amount of spam coming through the middle here. If I were Bob, I would bring my com in to support this because this T1 spam just isn't enough on its own. And meanwhile, there's a Corsair coming up here for Kelly. I'd have at least told it to attack that mechs on the way, but he's presumably preparing for a sneaky charge in from the side. Meanwhile, Bob also has T2 air. Is he doing anything with it? Oh, he's got... Is that Nothers in the queue? I think it's Nothers. The Corsair comes in. Hits the T2 Mex. Is it going to get another pass and kill it, though? No, it's not. So that Corsair was a waste from Kelly. However, he's got another here. He's got a Jester. He's got Bombers. And they are just trashing Bob's spam because of course his air force was up there defending against the Corsair and so the fact that th these engines would have been lovely if Bob had been able to defend and just tear them apart that's a huge horde of engines but now he's putting up point defense Bob doesn't have any arty in there and he's also got the air to ground coming down from Kelly so I think that that spam push it did get two mixes I don't think Kelly had actually tried to develop this but it, it did get two mixes, but that doesn't really feel like enough. And now the air comes in from Bob, but that's too little too late. Sure, it kills the air to ground, including the Corsair. But is that going to be enough? Now, this is quite sneaky from Kelly. We have two Corsairs up top. But we also have this Nother coming in from Bob. And it drops its bomb. Lovely pickup. Three engines, four P-Gens. Is it going to come around and hit this? Is it going to get a mex? It's under a bit of fire. We will have a check on what those Corsairs achieve for Kelly. And down it goes. What are the Corsairs up to? Hitting a T2 mex, but haven't taken it out. It's still got a couple of hit points left. If they split up, one go for that, one go for that, they could take two of these T2 mexes out, given this was damaged earlier. One T2 mex is down. And has Bob got anything really to defend? I'm surprised that one hasn't gone down yet. He has got more Nothers coming in there, but that one just gets shot down before it gets a decent amount of damage. So let's come back to Kelly's. They take out a second T2 Mex good play. Kelly is now in the eco lead and that's a lot of that is going to be because Bob's just lost two T2 Mexes and is about to lose a third. Ouch for Bob. Now Bob did continue a bit with spam but Kelly has those Wagners coming through the middle and Bob has Ilshis too. They'll be able to defend in conjunction with the spam against the Wagners 
but Bob hasn't really been able to get any traction with his spam and he hasn't had a chance to rebuild this yet. And those courses are still at it. One of them goes down, two nothers from Bob come and chase this one. I don't think it's going to get... no it's not. Still. That was some good damage from those Corsairs, and Bob has a lot of eco rebuilding to do. He is now 35 eco per tick behind, which is quite a lot. And Kelly has wisely gone for a cruiser first in order to be able to provide anti air support. And then. Okay, then another cruiser, but now I think he's on to Salem's. And I would love to see a Salem push coming in across here. And Bob pushes through the middle. On the right, we have another gunship, a Jester gunship, just a T11 from Kelly. Is there anything really to stop it? That's quite a mass of Nothers. Could he be aiming for a snipe? Well, I think he sees that gunship. He loses Amex. But they die to the Nothers. However, Kelly now does know about those Nothers. This is a good push, and it's sweeping down and around here. This is mainly undefended. There's a T1 PD there, but this is a lot of eco which Bob could kill. So, this could be the recovery that Bob needs, and he does need it. Look at that. He was, For a second there, he was 50 eco behind. And this is a good preparation for that Salem. Is it out yet? The first one's out, but he's chosen not to move it up yet. And perhaps he's going to choose to bring it back to defend against this push. Kelly, meanwhile, gets to tech 3 air. There it is. How's Bob doing on the air front? Well, Bob is still at T2. So that could be another advantage for Kelly. And in come all these tanks. The Ilshis are still back here, and I would come in and hit that there, that point defence with the Ilshis before anything more happens. This also should have been killed by just one tank from Bob would do it. Nonetheless, he is getting damage done on Kelly's stuff, and this gunship, this Jester, doesn't feel like it's going to do much. Because Bob has a decent number of inties in support. That said, Kelly has his first ASF out. And so Kelly can defend. Meanwhile, the T2 Navy from Kelly moves up. And this is hurting. Meanwhile, just a couple of tanks are coming down here. If I were Bob, I would bring these down to assist. Because the more damage you can do to this eco here, this completely undefended eco, the better. The Salems and cruisers are firing now on this lot expanding here. They'll be able to deny these mixes easy peasy. Will he go naughty naughty walky walky? Right now though he's more worried about defending down here and this Salem is staying to lay down fire on the Yenzin hover tanks and the Ilshavos that Bob has brought in. But he's going to get that mech which was a capped T2 mech and he might get some of these as well. And look at that, he has now levered the eco where Kelly was 3-2 to two ahead a few minutes ago. Now Bob has brought it level, and that is great play from Bob as he kills a second and a third capped T2 mechs, and these rhinos won't be enough to stop that horde of Ilshis. This could yet get some very decent damage done. You knew it was coming. Naughty naughty, walkie walkie. The Salem Destroyer comes onto land and starts bombarding Bob's eco. We'll watch that over there, but over here, Bob has brought in another decent horde of Ilshis and supporting units. But, over here, we have more Naughty Walkie as Salem's come in to defend. Now, Ilshis are faster on the land than Salem's, and so they come around to the south. Meanwhile, a lovely drop of Othiums 
The Ophiums in the back of Kelly's base and they're shooting up his mexes. This is beautiful play from Bob. It's brutal and sure he's lost some mexes here but the amount of damage that he's getting done to Kelly's mexes is immense. Kelly has a whaler out and that will work its way through the Ophiums in reasonable time and T1 air isn't going to be enough to defend for Bob especially with these ASFs supporting from Kelly and seeing that Kelly has air Bob is focusing down the power that's pretty nice and he's also got another big bunch of mexes but thanks to the whaler the and thanks to the Salem defense the push it has finally run out but look at that damage it did and now Bob has twice yes twice Kelly's eco that is amazing play from Bob I love the Ophium Bob and this Ophium is still going taking out a little bit it focuses the hydro trying to get a last power kill before it dies but no down it goes still a beautiful play from Bob meanwhile Kelly's Salem completely unhurt continues its advance love them or hate them guys they can both talk the talk and walk the walk. Now, what has Bob with which he can counter? Well, he's got Othiums coming out, and these T3 tanks, they're faster than Salem, so they'll be able, if he has enough, to run round the back, because of course the Salem can't fire backwards with this gun. It can only fire back about sort of this anger, maybe? So if he can get behind them, then he can shoot it up for free. But that may be too late, because look at the eco he is losing. And Kelly doesn't need that, because Kelly is at present... What's that? 60 eco behind? He's not power stored, yet. And Bob also brings in Nother fighter bombers. And Vothal gunships. Sneakily though, a whaler gunship Tech 3 from Kelly comes flying around the top. And can Bob counter? That was a huge drop in Bob's power. Look at that in his mass rather. He is not producing mass because he is horrifically power stored. And the second there where he stops being power stored is where the ASF is coming off the blocks. So he is desperately trying to get out ASFs, but he doesn't have the power to do it. Please, Bob, stop. Just build a TVP jet and then go back to assisting. The Salem is dead and the way they were dead, but they've taken out a huge amount of eco. Here, 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 and here. And Kelly now has the eco lead, not because he actually has more eco, despite that damage that we just saw, but because of the power store. Now... Do you remember these Salems that defended back here? Looks like they have a plan. Looks like they're coming across the water and up here to bring a sneaky surprise attack from this flank. And they will easily be able to counter these small units. However, I think the... Oh, he doesn't know about the... um about the subs, or he'd send the bricks in so that Bob wouldn't know about the Salem's coming, but the Salem's will easily clear up a couple of subs when they get their feet, or I guess hull, back in the water. More whaler raids are taking things out, and there's a single, okay, three anti-air turrets there, but against a Tech 3 whaler, this Tech 1 anti-air is going to do nothing. And Bob's eco continues to be hurt. <clears throat> now, gunships can fire on other gunships, even though they can't fire on other air. But these gunships are choosing not to engage the whaler and go on south. I think they want to worry about these bricks, which have got themselves firing through the ground to try and hit this frigate when they could just be taking out this mechs. Now, it looks like Bob has got a PGen on the way at last, and will he take the eco lead again when he recovers his power balance?
He gets it up. Haha. <laughs> He's not power stored, and yet Kelly, thanks to all those raids, is still 30 eco ahead. Lovely play from Kelly. No more Salem's coming across this side yet, but we can see more on the way being produced from this heavily assisted factory. Another one's just rolled off the production line. And another whaler ray eater comes in, getting more eco. Bob really needs to figure out how to stop this. If I were Bob, Sam's. It would be Sam's is scattered everywhere here. I'd overspend, sure, but there will be Sam's and there will be Shields, and Kelly would not be getting through with these singular gunship raids. And look at Kelly's lead in the eco, it's just skyrocketing. Meanwhile though, I think we are about to see something beautiful. I think we are about to see a Salem pincer movement, as three come walking onto the land from the left hand lake and another three come sailing up the right hand lake so that is pretty tasty will this be the final nail in the coffin for bob or will he have enough air to fight them off he's bringing gunships down to take some pot shots at these two and there's nothing really to defend Sailor Mantier is pretty weak and gunships are usually a good counter to them, but only two gunships, even Vothos, against those Salems doesn't feel like quite enough, especially as Kelly's trying to bring in an ASF and it picks off a gunship. Bob has a decent number of ASFs, but they're not in good position and both the gunships go down, the Salems will continue to advance. Meanwhile, these three are walking across the land, and as if that weren't enough, we've also got a squadron of bricks pushing in. However, despite the fact that this is mostly only T2, Ilshis are pretty good, and there's an Othium in there, I think that'll be enough to hold back this push of bricks. This little expansion has been taken out, and the Salems do range these mexes, or at least they range this one. They could walk onto land to range that one, but... And these Othiums have been caught napping. Bob obviously busy elsewhere, and doesn't... There, there they go, but not before he manages to lose one. He didn't lose this mex in the end, and the shield would do good work to protect it. One of the Salems goes down. And we can see both of the attacks on each side here. And Bob's focusing on the one in the right hand lake first. He's got nothers, he's got gunships. He's got Othiums that might be able to range it if they came up close to the seaside. But while he's focusing on that, he's not focusing on these three and this trio of Salems are going to take out at least one. They're going to take out some of the build power trying to rebuild here. Taking out another one. This is good work. And there's still one Salem alive down here. The Othiums will kill it, but every second the Othiums and the gunships are down here, they're not killing these. And more and more damage is being inflicted up on this side. If they came over here, this would be great. The Mexes are at T3 here for Bob, and he cannot afford to lose that, given how far behind he already is in economic production. And he does. He's focusing this T2 Mex. Will it go down? T2 Mex, T3 Mex. This whatever Mex of war, it's a good Mex. Bob doesn't want to lose it. One Salem down. That mix is into the red though. Kelly brings in ASFs trying to clear up the gunships before they can kill the Salem. However, the Othiums come in from the side. The gunships are dead, but the Salem goes down. Will its last hit... 80 hit points. 80 hit points. My dudes, there are just 80 hit points left on that 
T3 Max, but it still lives and it still produces mass for Bob. If at first you don't succeed, as the saying goes, and watch this, those Salem's didn't really succeed, though they did take, well I say that, but they took out quite a lot, but they could have succeeded more, and so here they are, coming back again, a new wave of Salem's, making landfall and walking across to try and get some work done against Bob's eco. And while this relentless pressure is coming in from Kelly, what's Bob doing to counter it? Well, I think he probably has air control. Can he turn that to his advantage in some way? This looks like the beginnings of an air grid. But he hasn't got anything down here, and he hasn't yet rebuilt his navy from that Salem push. I would be very keen for him to start putting up a new navy, maybe even putting up a new navy down here. Seraphim missile cruisers would probably range up to about here, give or take. Which would deny something, it would also make it much harder for him to come through the gap if Bob were able to use attack ground with a group of cruisers. Those Salem's that we saw coming, walking out, are just going to get gunships again. Will Kelly respond with his air? I don't think he has enough to respond. And even if he did, he's already lost one of his Salem's. Make that two of his Salem's. Bob's brought in his air to guard and Kelly's not taking the fight. He's just hanging back over here. He knows if he went in that he'd lose it, so that push was rather more easily repulsed by Bob's forces. Now, what have we got going on? And Bob looks like he's not doing so well. What's his wing condition? Obviously he needs to reboot his eco. But can he actually hit something so that Kelly just doesn't have more? This naval HQ, I think, would be a key target. Hit that with his gunships, and it's just down. Getting back into the water here would also be a strong possibility. Are we late enough in the game that it's worth considering some long-range stratagems? At the moment, though, Bob is very focused on expanding his eco. He has got some protection lined up, but will it be enough, or will the next Salem walk come soon enough to stop it? I really don't know what Bob's best plan is here. I'm very surprised he hasn't put up a shield and a couple of Sams to defend this cluster. This would be a perfect point for a shield. He's massing gunships. One bomber comes in from Kelly, and this is almost a disproportionate response from Bob, sending in a vast swathe of ASFs which take it out. However, Kelly has been burning quite a lot of air. Not sure what he's planning with it down there, but a surprising amount of this, as you can see from the speeds that Bob's bringing in, is T1, and this is all ASFs. The air fight goes down. Who's going to win it? Who's going to get air control? It's going to be Kelly, isn't it? You know what I was saying? Well, Bob should do something with all that air control. What air control, my dudes? He has just had his air shredded by Kelly, and now Kelly has the advantage in everything, but while Kelly's air is over here, Bob's gunships are coming in over here, but there's three ASFs. Will they be enough to stop? Oh, and there's two cruisers. Bob is opening fire on this mech. He gets one mech, but I think that's going to be all. Yes, it is. He gets one mech before that horde of gunships is cleared up. And... You know what the definition of insanity is, my dudes? You try the same thing again and expect a different result. 
I don't know whether Kelly is expecting a different result here, but he's tried the same thing again. Another pair of Salems has come marching onto the land. Now, what could Kelly do to improve upon this? Could he just bring an NG here, drop an engineer here or something, build a few T2 land factories and spam flak in support of the Salems? That, I think, would be very powerful. But as yet, he's not going for any such thing. Bob's got the shield up, but he looks like he's power stored again. And for a second there, you can see he was. Yes, look, every time he's building an ASF, down goes his power. He is building a lot more pigeons. In fact, he's building two at once. So he will soon have that under control. But given this Salem push, he'll want the shield up sooner rather than later. He's got six gunships finished now, so he's going in for the Salems, and I think he'll probably take them with that. They're out of range of the crews as the next two are coming onto land, but they're some way behind, and they're just effectively a separate wave. Kelly's bringing his air force now, and we saw Kelly win air, and Bob just doesn't have the ASFs to stop this. Kelly's lost one Salem, but the other's going to survive as Kelly's air force utterly mashes Bob's. This Salem is now holding position while Kelly brings in two more to support it and the trickle of gunships, the miserable trickle of gunships that Bob is sending to defend, that is just being taken out. Ooh, do I see some brick drops going on here? I think I do. Four bricks picked up. Where are they going? They're going here. I think he could safely drop them right here, to be honest. But, you know, better to be safe than sorry. Meanwhile, Othiums are coming in against these Salems. The Salems are retreating, which is a bit of a mistake. On the left, the Salems have fallen back, and I think they're trying to lure the Othiums within range of the cruisers, but there's still quite a lot. Here on the right, these bricks have dropped, but Kelly might not have... There we go, Kelly remembers the bricks. And the Othiums have indeed got in range of the cruisers, but they have destroyed the Salems and they're just pulling back. Nice play, just to keep them out of the range of those cruisers, but Kelly is bringing in whaler gunships, and those will be more than a match for the Othiums. Oof, look at this, these are all capped T2 Mexes, and that's a vast amount of bird power, and I don't think Bob has actually noticed what's going on on this side of the map. Oof, that was not what I meant to do, right. And the whalers... Okay, I thought the whalers were going to stop and hit the Othiums, but they seem to be heading on and around the top, trying to take out some eco back here. Bob brings in his ASFs. Whalers have a lot of hit points to chill through, but that's not many. Still, that's a T3 mech, and if the whalers can claim it, that's going to be pretty nice. But the whalers do not claim it, and like this one before, it survives deep into the red. In come the bricks. There's only two left thanks to these gunships, but now Kelly has been able to bring his air across. And these bricks are unopposed as they come to take out two more Cap T2 Mexes. I say unopposed, but Kelly's flown his air away. And these two gunships, these three gunships, will be able to work their magic on the bricks. Probably not before all oh, this is dead though. And indeed not, both the mexes go down. Watch this though, we have a monkey started under the water for Kelly. And of course the monkey has stealth and you would need sonar to see it was actually being built there. Bob would just see these two engies sitting on the surface. And so when the monkey's built, you won't be able to see it because it's got stealth. 
so he'll just be able to have it pop out here and cause a nasty surprise for Bob. However, Bob has just started a nuke right here. I don't like that position. That is basically the closest to Kelly on all three possible lines of attack from this lake, from this lake, and across the land, and from the air. So that seems quite a vulnerable position to place a nuke. And sure, it's the only place he's got a T3 shield, but I still don't like it. Kelly, however, already has a nuke silo built, and Kelly has started a nuke of his own. I don't think he actually knows about Bob's nuke. No, he doesn't. Look, he's got nothing there. So, they just decided, by chance, to go for nukes at the same time. Does Bob have a nuke defense yet? I'm not seeing any. I'm assuming he's going to put one up here or something, because that would block shots coming in from anywhere near Kelly's base. If Bob did get a nuke defence there though, could he perhaps get this to T3, build a plan B nuke sub, put it here, fire nukes in this direction? That would be quite fun, but it would also be a lot of faff, especially as Kelly has already started making an actual nuke launcher here. Bricks coming through the water now, and Bob doesn't see him because he hasn't got any scouts in the area if he did well the monkeys engines have been killed but as far as Bob knew they were just trying to build a Sam and Bob pulls back is he working on any torp bombers anywhere don't think so This, however, this is a lot of whaler gunships. Now, whalers are tough. They're tough, they deal a decent amount of damage because, you know, they're T3 gunships and they have radar stealth. So, Bob might not know they're there. And they might be a nasty surprise for him if they come when his air is over here. And I'm sure Kelly could do something clever to lure the air by, I don't know, sending a gunship or two here, sending his air to support, and then sending those whalers in to hit these mexes, which still, somehow, are unprotected. Bob's nuke is finished, and it's being assisted reasonably heavily. Kelly's hasn't yet finished yet, and he's not assisting his SMD. So that could be a tasty thing for Bob if he's able to get a nuke off. He's also worried about his eco. He's getting the ARAS on his com after the RAS. And after all that back and forth of who was in the lead of eco earlier, look at this, the egos are balanced. Kelly's collected a little more overall during the course of the game, but as it is, they're almost dead even on how much mass they're actually bringing in per tick. Another Salem raid, another gunship defense, It's a, it's a sign of a glitch in the matrix, and so on. You definitely thought you saw that before. Well, you did, but also you saw it again. These bricks are getting dangerously close, though. Bob must see them, because he's got this Othium here under the water. Yes, it, well, he knows there's something there. And he's got a big big horde of gunships lying in wait and the bricks pull back apart from this one one lone brick walks to already on half health walks towards the coastline and pops up just as Bob moves his gunships away and therefore the lone brick somehow unmolested proceeds in and starts shooting at this air defense it would be great if it could pick up a p-gen or something but unfortunately for him, Bob has noticed and his gunships easily tear it apart. Meanwhile though, we saw Kelly finishing his nuke. He's not assisting it at all though, nor is he assisting the nuke defence. And that makes me think that he doesn't know... Oops, wrong view. He doesn't know about Bob's... Okay, you know he does know. He knows there's a nuke there, so I'm very surprised he's not assisting the nuke defence. 
And Bob's got a nuke defense under construction here. Will it be loaded by the time that Kelly is ready to fire though? I don't know. However, we've got to watch here. The bricks are coming out of the water. This T3 mech will be the first casualty. The gunships immediately come back. They'll easily chill through these bricks, which have no anti-air to support them. These point defences will help, but what can the bricks kill before they die? Kill the shield, perhaps? Might be nice. They're focusing the nuke. Boom! They kill the nuke. The nuke explosion kills the shield. Then they focus down a further one. Two. Oh, don't tell me they're going to get a third point defence. They still haven't... Point defence? Mechs. They still haven't killed this one somehow. But they get a third. Okay, that's Bob's third T3 mechs to survive while deep into the red. But still, T three T3 mechs. Bit of a tongue twister there. Three T3 mechs and the nuke taken up by that raid. It more than paid for itself. That was beautiful. That's five Salem's this time. That's certainly more than before. And there's a sixth coming up behind them. Kelly has a bit of a one-track mind. And again, in comes the interceptor screen. In comes the clutch of gunships. There are cruisers nearby. There's a sneaky little bomber raid flying around the top. But these Salem's, they're only lasting a couple of seconds under the firepower of the gunships. And it feels to me like that was just a waste of mass from Kelly. He's going to get no benefit to that whatsoever. Oh, Bob has retreated a bit and Kelly's bringing in his air. Is he going to take it? Is he going to come in and... No, he's not. Kelly flies away. He doesn't take the air fight. However, he did remember that monkey and he's got a clutch of engineers working on it. He will probably get that up this time unless Bob comes and does something about it right now. And Bob, who's been keen on his airplay, is going to double down on that. He is starting an Awasa experimental bomber. Now, this, this right here, this will be a beautiful target for the Awasa because it's a big bunch of unshielded pigeons, and the pigeons have 6,000 hit points and the Awata bomb does 11,000 so it would take out a big clutch of them and the chain reaction would do massive massive damage to Kelly's air grid so if Bob can just hit that clutch of air grid pigeons he will make a huge dent in Kelly's production and now it is Bob who has the eco lead he's rebuilt quite quickly on where the nuke was he's trying to put up a shield again to cover it but he is now 50 mass ahead of kelly what's kelly finished there must be the monkey it is the monkey is up and it's under the water but that's a lot of torps bob is now aware that attacks can come from under the water and that kelly is willing to do it and so he's prepared with a big bunch of torques. Torques? Torps. But for that, he's going to have to see the monkey. And the monkey has personal stealth, so he will need to get an Omni Scout over it or get some actual vision in the water in order to know that that monkey is coming. Now, I don't like this going in unsupported. I would much prefer a chunk of bricks to come with it within the bounds of its stealth field. But I'm sure Kelly knows what he's doing, notwithstanding his earlier claim of being drunk. Well, we want a funny game, so that's nice. But will it cost him this monkey? Will that monkey get any actual work done? The next round of Salem's is again countered, and the Arwasa finishes. What's Bob going to do with it? And his missile defence is loaded. Kelly's nuke isn't, nor is Kelly's missile defence, but that doesn't matter because he killed Bob's nuke.
Monkey's planning to come up and take out this army. I don't know if that's the best use for it. I think the best use for it might just be getting straight into Bob's air grid. He comes up, he sees the magnitude of the army, and he just dives away again. However, Bob flies over it and sees it while it's above the water. Bob now knows there's a monkey coming. Unless, of course, he's focusing on this arsewasher. Kelly lands a big chunk of whalers and they just get shredded by Bob's ASFs. This could be a problem for Bob though. There's just a clutch of Sams being thrown up by the monkey engineers in the middle and the arse washer is going to fly straight over them unless Bob is careful. He tried to off map it a bit there which is a bit rude or either way it got off map for a bit but it does sneak past the anti-airs without too much trouble but Kelly dives it. Kelly just dives the washer and I think that was wise even though it's going to lose him air. First this fight is going down slightly over his Sams so he will be able to get more kills than otherwise thanks to those Sams. Still look at that Bob is cleaning up the air like it's nobody's business. And now Bob needs to get out before all these Sams tear apart his air force any longer. Here comes that monkey meanwhile. It's been heading slowly towards the base. And if Bob did take notice of it, he hasn't remembered it because these torp bombers are not attacking it. In fact, they're just sitting on the ground ready to be shot when the monkey pops out of the water. But Kelly doesn't have any ASF left to support it. The gunships are being lured away by these bricks, which is good timing. Because now they're not going to be shooting the monkey, and out comes the monkey. You don't often see a monkey laser being used to kill torpedo bombers, but there you go. It kills a couple of those as the next washer flies across. And the gunships come back. I don't think that monkey is going to get much done. Kelly agrees with me. He's taking it back into the water. It's going to be on about half health. But that washer is about to have a problem. And the problem comes in the form of several Sams. The washer just stops. It's trying to retreat. But look at that. It's taken at least half its health in damage. And desperately flies away. It just lost half its health for free. It got nothing done. Meanwhile, though, the Ophiums are swarming this monkey with their torpedoes. I didn't approve of the patch which buffed Brick and Ophium torps just a little bit because it means that you could actually do interesting things like this. Two or three Ophiums against a monkey, the monkey torps shred them. Thirty Ophiums against a monkey. Or however many that is. Twenty-five and that monkey is just going to die despite its regen, despite its veterancy and Bob is planning to come back into the water as we can see from the build template up here the monkey goes down into the red it's, is it farther than the Othiums? I actually don't know That doesn't tell me the Othium speed, I thought it did. Where does Land HQ? Anyone see it? I don't. Well, wherever his Land HQ might be, actually it might have been killed by might have been killed by one of those raids. That monkey is now down to just 6,000 health, but only a couple of Othiums are now in range, and the monkey might be able to make its escape. And Bob is going straight for a T3 factory there. Don't forget that Seraphim battleships have nukes, so that could be his strategy and build a battleship, have it bombard some stuff, surround it with cruisers or SAMs to defend. The monkey, however, has stopped and it is just taking fire for free from the Othiums. It tries to run away, but I think that's going to be too little too late. And the Othiums see that and follow.
The monkey might have made it out of range though. Can they see it? They might not be able to see it. They cannot. It's far enough away that... Oh, but it turns. If it hadn't turned, it could have escaped. But now it's been caught. It's in range. I suppose Kelly's trying to keep it in the water because in the water it only leaves half reclaim. As we're about to see. Boom. Down it goes. And there's only 8,500 reclaim there instead of the big heap of mass that Bob had to... Um, that Kelly had to use to make it. Speaking of big heaps of mass, there's this washer wreck here, which Kelly is wisely reclaiming. And I think, though, that that is actually raw production on top of which he's reclaiming. So Kelly's eco is looking pretty amazing right now. How's that nuke doing? Well, it's loaded. How's Bob's anti-nuke doing? Well, oh, that's loaded too. Where does it cover? It covers up to here. If Kelly drops a nuke here, that could be brutal. Taking out the shield, the, P, the, the P, PDs, and four T3 mexes. But that would require precision. Does he know about Bob's... Yes, he does know about Bob's SMD, so he could measure it if he wanted. Down here... The Othiums are swarming around the Sams and taking them out, but Kelly's defense is a harms T3 torpedo launcher. The Cybrans are the only people who get T3 torpedo launchers. They used to have stealth fields as well, which was brutal, but that got taken away in a patch. Um, even so, they go under the water so you can't shoot them from above ground, so the Othiums are going to have to fight it with their torpedoes. They can't just pop out and shoot back. However, that's nearly 30 Othiums. Is it gonna be enough? I think it might, you know. That Harms is already on half health and it's absolutely surrounded by the Othiums. But the Othiums seem to care less about killing the Harms. I want to stay to finish it off, but I think they're gonna... Boom, down it goes. And they're gonna come out and hit Eco here. There's a T2 Mex, there's production. There's a couple of bricks, but the rest of this is all anti-air, and so these Othiums could inflict decent damage if they got up here. And on top of that, we have the cruisers. We have... look how fast those cruisers are being produced. This is a heavily assisted Tech 3 naval yard, and it's spamming up cruisers like nobody's business. So not only will Bob be able to use these to maintain air control, he will also be able to bombard a decent amount of eco. What's his range on those cruisers? Up to about here. I don't think even if he went right up to the wall, he'd be able to hit these. And Kevy's soothsayer allows him to see a decent amount of what's going on. But why hasn't Kelly launched his nuke? Strategic launch detected. Ooh, that looks perfectly placed. Remember how the line came up to about here? I think that Bob is going to be unpleasantly surprised. And Bob does move his comm a bit, but his SMD is loaded twice. So if it were coming here, it would be shot down no problem. And look at him doubling down on the air. The third Arsewasher bomber has just finished. He sends his gunships to defend against the bricks, and the bricks aren't going to get much done. They don't outrange these, but it's going to get through. Boom! Bob was already behind an eco, and that has only added to his woes. Kelly is near is 300 eco ahead there. That's crazy. I think Bob's trying to say no, but actually he said umbra ooh, one centimeter. I am lucky, says Kelly. He placed it very well. Fair play to him. Now we have got another monkey coming across here, and these cruiser missiles are going to be too slow to hit it. The Othiums need to pop out in order to counter the monkey. Or, of course, those three washers could bomb the monkey. Obviously, he can see this because the missiles are falling down behind it. But it stops on the coast. That's a mistake. The missiles can then immediately hit it, and they do. The washers come in, but they don't drop on the monkey. It's going to rely on the Othiums to kill it. And the Othiums are, I think, going to kill it, but then they're going to die to the bricks. Meanwhile, a washer is shot down by Kelly's air, but Kelly loses air as a result again. And the other two come in. 
There is now a shield here, but this bomb is going to be beautiful. Oof. Look at that. Look at that horrific molestation of Kelly's air grid. And this is just going to be painful. The bomb drops. Boom. What air grid, my dudes? What air grid? Now, Bob desperately needs to take out some of this eco. A lot of Kelly's eco is already under the water in the form of Raz SCUs here. Bob can't build Raz SCUs, he's Seraphim. All of his other SCUs have a reasonable amount of mass production, unlike regular SCUs, but that's still, he doesn't have the ability to just pump out mobile eco in the same way that other races do. He's coming back, he's trying to get a pass on this. He'll get the Soothsayer, he'll get a decent amount of mechs. Oof, and he does, but it gets shot down. The Sams take it down and it crashes into the water up here. It'll only leave a bit of reclaim. How much is it going to leave there? Come on, show me my dudes. It sinks slowly to the bottom. Well, we'll check on that in a moment. And the third one's died over here. Come on. 15,000. Decent amount of mass. But look at this Salem push, meanwhile. These gunships will eat them, but there's so many Salems. I guess Kelly just needed to find enough. They're going to die, but not before doing horrific damage to Bob's eco. All of these mechs is yet again dead. The gunships will take them out before they get any more, I think. They might get a hit on this. Nope, Bob has had so many lucky escapes with things being deep into the red. Look, this one's still on 80 right here. Is that Brit going to get one? Nah. One more sailing to kill Bob. It's right there. But... Rather than bother with rebuilding his eco, there's so much reclaim here, Kerry can just eat that, and he's going straight for a disruptor piece of artillery. Tech 3 heavy artillery. He's, he's barely even bothering to rebuild his base. And, I mean, it's paying off. Look, he is 200 eco ahead of Bob. But that's a huge huge gunship raid for Bob. How many are in there? 90. Half of them are out of fuel, but 90 gunships. That's crazy. And Kelly loses T3 mixes to it in a flash. If only he knew that Kelly's comm was right there, Bob could just send a wave of torpedo bombers and win the game right here, right now. But he doesn't. Kelly has stealth, and so he's not going to pick up that on his radar. And in comes the wave of gunships taking out mexes. There is a cruiser here, and I think that Bob would be best served taking out the HQ, taking out the cruiser, and then worrying about these mexes. But he's got one T3 mex, he's got a T2 mex, two more T3 mexes here he might be able to take if he focused. Where's he going? Nope, he's just retreating. I do not like that. He should have sacrificed a few of them to take out this mechs right here. He is now within 100 of Kelly, which is an improvement, but even so. And he does take out that mechs. He's not going to get that one, though. There's now multiple cruisers there able to stop him. And we can hear tactical missile defense here, because look at this. The cruiser bombardment is insane. But all it can really hit now is these TMDs. There's nothing it can actually really achieve. Does Bob have a new plan? Yes, his new plan is chickens. He's working on a chicken. Pathetic game. Really? What do you mean, says Bob? It's an insane game. It is an insane game. Some of the decisions have been questionable, but that just makes it more fun to watch. Kelly is not happy. He's not bothering to put his caps on. He's just saying, with caps. I like that. There's something, there's something pleasant about that. Just saying, with caps, instead of putting... A capsicorn. I'm just your brother, says Bob. I have no idea whether Bob is actually 
Kelly's brother, or whether he's just trying to invoke a spirit of camaraderie. But either way, it hasn't stopped Kelly, who has nearly finished this piece of artillery, and who has a mega coming across to deal with these cruisers. I'm reasonably sure Bob has not a clue, he does not, that there is an artillery piece going up. And it's finished. Bob's going to get a nasty surprise. He has shielded most of his air grid, which is nice, and he's just about shielded his air HQ. And his first chicken's done. But can he turn this into something that will do the damage? And Kelly knows that Bob has air control, so look at these lines of Sam's. Bob is going to have to find a different answer than air if he wants to take out the artillery piece and its first shot fires. Bob is ahead of Nico again though, but how long is that going to last when he starts losing Eco to T3 artillery? If Bob was watching, he'll have seen that. He finishes his first chicken. He must know now. He must know there's artillery firing on him. <clears throat> What's he going to do about it? I think he needs shields here and here. And and here. In fact, he just needs more shields everywhere. He needs shields protecting these mexes. He needs shields protecting these mexes. He needs to defend against the arty. Several shields are the best, but one isn't enough, as is proved by it going down there. And he's got a land HQ here, but it might be about to die to the... Oof, that nearly, nearly took out his SMD. Well, now it did, and it also took out half his air grid. That was painful. Bob, my dude, you didn't shield. You needed to shield. Where's the shields? That is a shield, sure, but it's a bit too little, a bit too late. I also want to see shields here and here. The chicken marches forward. What's he going to support it with? This army? That's a lot of engineers. His, his com is trying to move to safety in the water. A mega is coming out to try and deal with these cruisers. It stops and it takes a couple of hits from the cruiser tactical missiles. I think the mega should be enough to take the cruisers and those bricks were if the, if the mega isn't. Does Bob need a few destroyers down here in order to support the cruisers? Because now he's just going to lose them. However, the Mega is standing still and it will take some decent amounts of hits from the cruisers before it kills them all. But three are dead, four are dead. It's going to shred them all without even the slightest problem. Down they go. But Bob is sending a lot, a lot of gunships. How many gunships is that from Bob? That is 90 gunships. They could easily kill the Mega, and they could wreck, absolutely wreck Kelly's Eco here. There would be a beautiful place, because how many Razzas he uses that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That would be a massive... And those. That will be a massive amount of damage if he could take them out. I don't think he should go for the Disruptor because of the sheer amount of Sams there, there, there and there. He's ignored the Mega, though it takes a bit of collateral just as they fly past. I think he is. I think he's going for the Disruptor and I think that's a mistake. He targets it. Now the Disruptor's just about poking out I think it's certainly taking a little bit of damage oh I think they might even be getting under the shield but the Sams are just too many and the disruptor survives on half health and this one over here is nearly finished so um 
That, I think, was a big mistake from Bob, trying to gunship the Disruptor rather than trying to take out Kelly's eco. And look at this. Bob had an air grid here. Bob had an eco here. Bob had loads, and now he doesn't. The chicken has come through, but it's all on its own. The chicken plus that might have stopped this damaged Mega. The chicken on its own is just going to die to the Mega. The Mega sees it and opens fire. The chicken's trap. The chicken stops. Whatever he does, that's suicide. Just stopping it there. If he wants to get some d damage done with the Iron Storm, he's going to have to walk in here. If you, oh, the Mega's actually damaged it. It it goes down. I wasn't expecting that. And the chicken is shooting on those rather CUs. And look at that. That is a delicious chain reaction. The Iron Storm is going to get quite a. Oof, look at these SCUs as they burn in the Iron Storm flames of this chicken. And that's actually knocked Kelly quite a bit back in the eco. They're not quite level now, but now they are. That last Raz SCU goes up. Bob has somehow, despite being under double disruptor fire, taken the lead in eco again. This is mad. But he's about to lose his air HQ. He loses the transport he was trying to build. He's trying to build a lot of transports, presumably to ferry engineers somewhere, because what else has he got? But he's going to lose the air HQ, and that will be one of his big advantages out of the window. And suddenly, despite Bob taking the eco lead, it feels like the writing might be on the wall. These guys were too late to help the chicken. On their own, one Mega plus a bunch of bricks should stop them. Even if it weren't for supporting fire, that can probably come from the lake. Bob is carrying NGs down across the lake. What's his plan? Where's he going to land them? Is he going for a new naval yard down here? Is he trying to build XBs down here? Where Bob can't see them, maybe he should land here, build a stealth field, so that he can surprise Kelly. He's got a nice little strat here, but now that he's got the air HQ under fire, he can't really make any more. And so that will not really be much good on his own. And we have a huge, a huge migration here. That is... Huh. 14 plus 33 plus 6 engineers of varying techs plus the com just migrating south. This is a lot of shields and it's defending Bob's main clutch of what's left of his eco. But will even super strong Sarah shields hold up against this double arty bombardment? It looks like the answer is no. And Kelly has already started work on his third Artie, that's mad. But Bob is losing eco. This isn't just isn't sustainable. If Bob's going to win, he's going to have to find a way to do it right now. I mean, the triple Awasa bomber attack that almost did for Kelly, almost. But he's been hamstrung this entire game by the fact that he doesn't know where Kelly's com is because Kelly's been stealthed and hiding under the water this whole time. What upgrades he on? Did it tell us? T3. More hit points, better buildability. Chickens. Chickens is what Bob has planned down here in the water. Just like Kelly built a monkey here, Bob can build chickens here. And since... But that is a crazy, crazy number of point defences. That's probably enough to stop a chicken. The Mega makes this probably enough to stop two or three chickens. And there's another Mega nearly finished. So I think these chickens are just too little too late.
the RT bombardment continues to rain on Bob's base. So, if you're Bob, have you resigned? Would you have resigned by now if you were in Bob's position? He still has 360 eco, which is more eco than I get at all in most games. But, when compared to Kelly's, Kelly has collected 250,000 more mass than Bob. That's like a Mavel's extra worth of mass than Bob. A Scathis. He could have a Scathis here. And the vast migration of engineers continues. This is... I mean, some people might say this is too many engineers. Does he have the... I mean, is he already... Okay, no, this is not too many engineers. He has so much mass that he's not able to spend it on one chicken until some more of these NGs join the fray. However, when they join the fray, he will be eating through that mass in a matter of seconds. More shields going up. A wise choice. Shields, power to run the shields. He could rebuild some of these mexes, but the arty is just hitting the shield so hard that he needs more. And the third one, when it goes up, it's almost into the green. Don't make me wait. There it goes, into the green. When that third one goes up, it will be enough to crack Bob's shell. First chicken is finished. He's focusing on the second. And again, he's just got to spend that mass like nobody's business. He's probably not going to take the chicken out of the water yet. He probably doesn't want to show it until he's got enough to take on what he thinks is there. But what does he know is there? He knows there's an insane number of PDs, but he doesn't know about the Mega. He doesn't know about first Mega. Yes, he also doesn't know about second Mega. And the... Artillery bombardment continues. Is it going to break through? Well, the answer looks like... But the shields pop back on. Shields up here too, protecting these at last. Bob's got to protect what he's got. I feel that another Salem push at this stage would actually get something done because what is there to stop it? But Kelly has decided that Salems are no longer the word of the day and instead there's the third arty. The third arty piece is up. Surely there's no way that Bob comes back from this. A third mega is up and there's still only one chicken. Now make that two now, a second's just finished. But is there any way that Bob can do anything other than lose horrifically right now? Could he tell in and try and find some way of killing Kelly here? I don't think so because there's enough on the surface that any torpedoes Bob tried to build would just die. And Kelly could actually do the opposite successfully. He could build the torp upgrade on his com, tell in here, and kill Bob. So that's not a way that Kelly could... Um, that's the only way that Bob could defeat Kelly. So, some sort of stealth based here? Maybe even a stealth nuke if he can... Because of course there isn't any nuke defense here really now. He killed that with the washers. And he's got enough here just about to hold by the looks of things. Despite the free RT most of this is still up and running. And there are just more shields going up all the time. And if you're Kelly, do you just quadruple down on the RT? I think that he's already getting all he's gonna get done with the RT done, and he needs to worry about just finding and killing Bob's com. Because Especially at a time like this, Bob's going to be desperate. He's going to be looking for a snipe. And while he doesn't know where Kelly is, he can probably take a good guess. 
but he continues to be all in on the chickens. There's the third chicken coming out for Bob now. Kelly must surely know that there's a lot there. Yes, he knows what's there. He even knows that one of those things is a chicken. So he is not going to be troubled by this because he has three megas, several bricks, and a huge line of point defense. Make that four megas as his next one goes up. He's also even got a soul ripper almost done, though he's only got a couple of engines focusing on that. It's not really going to achieve a great deal. The megas move. They're getting in formation, ready to make the attack. Meanwhile, Bob's base is holding up. Bob is building enough shields to... Huh, bro, can we draw, please, says Bob. Would you like a draw? You would, but I think that you know that Kelly is nearly twice as far ahead on Eco as you. He's smashing your base. What do you think? asks Bob cheerfully. We both played great. We are good players. No, I don't deny that. They are both far superior to me, and despite Kelly's over-insistence on those Salem pushes, he has played great, and he's winning. And Bob is also a great player. But Kelly wants to be logical about it. Let's figure this out. I brought some beer already. Come on, in the name of friendship. Well... You know what doesn't look friendly is these four megas. Let's draw! I don't know what Bob actually sounds like. Maybe he's really deep and gruff. Come on, in the name of friendship, let's draw! But with all respect to Bob, I think I, I, I'm reading this as slightly whiny text right now. Now that Mega stopped for a while and took a few hits, but one Mega beats one chicken. In fact, one Mega probably beats two chickens, so four Megas against four chickens, my money's on the Megas. Especially given that these fellows have sauntered away, the cruisers would help if the Megas stopped moving, but they're just missing where the Megas are standing. And the chickens come out of the water. The Megas are going to stand still if he focuses fire and then the cruisers might hit them, and one mecha goes down, but one chicken goes down. Two chickens go down. The Ophiums come back out, it's going to take out a second mega. And it does. And these megas are just standing still as the chickens fire upon them, but they're standing in the corpses of their brethren and getting ion stormed. Three chickens go down. Three Megas go down, but the fourth chicken is about to die, leaving only a few Othiums left. Down it goes, the fourth Mega is still standing, but the Othiums swarm around it. Come on, it's a draw! Let this sufferation end, complains Bob. Sufferation. He's obviously feeling particularly tortuous about it. The Mega does go down. All the XPs for both sides are dead. But now we're back to the fact that Kelly has 700 mass, Bob has 400 mass, and that Soul Ripper is coming in the back ready to do the damage. And it's going to break through the shields, leaving it open. It's probably going to die, but it's going to leave it open. But come on. When you are losing, says Kelly, knowing full well that it... Oof. And the RT and the Soul Ripper between them do it. Bob's base is crippled. 200 eco left. Kelly has three times the eco and more. Bob sends a wave of ASFs and they might take out the beater, but... And they do take out the beetle, but what's Bob going to do? He's also lost the majority of his power. Does he have enough power to keep those shields up? He does not. So now the Arty can just go to town on these because Bob can't keep the shields up. He's got a few Othiums left here, but that's a lot of bricks. And there's already another Mega for Kelly. Whereas Bob is barely a third of the way through his next chicken.
If there aren't already F's in the metaphorical chat for Bob, then there should be. That is a lot of bricks for Kelly. Nearly 50. A mega run 50 bricks. If the mega just gets into the water, then Bob dies, no questions. And while there is an other chicken, I mean, if these bricks get into the water, Bob dies. And the last vestiges of Bob's base are dying to the artillery fire. Bob sends a wave of T1 scouts trying to see what's coming, and now he knows what's coming. Well, these bricks are falling back for some reason. Maybe there was a formation move set up. But, I mean, the Mega's probably enough on its own. And now the RT's falling on Bob's NGs. Oh, Bob, that's gonna hurt. I am a noob, says Kelly. He's finally queued up a big line of spam factories up here, especially when drunken. You won just for the Razboy, says Bob, and I actually kind of agree with him. So much of Kelly's eco was smashed by the washer raid that if it weren't for the Raz comps he had underwater, he would have been crippled. But as it was, he was able just to come back and tear Bob a new one. Kelly apologises for that. This should be a draw. Equal skill, right? I just didn't see your arty. He didn't scout his arty, Bob. And while you are vastly more skilled than I, and I mean, according to the um, according to the ladder rankings, you are equal skill with Kelly. No, I am a noob, literally, says Kelly. Is he just trying to ground fire Bob to death? I'm not sure that's going to work super well. And while T3 RT ground fire to kill an underwater com would be hilarious. It's probably going to be slow. But that brick push is coming, and that brick push is going to seal the deal, no questions. Just gets under the water. And the torpedoes kill Bob's com in seconds. And Bob resigns. Wow. That was epic. With the eco lead flip flopping so much it was hard to tell who was winning and then Bob brought in that washer raid. I thought after that he must surely have it. But no. How could he have capitalised on it? Could he have doubled down on the air with a big wave of torp bombers? Should he have tried to get into the navy on the left? I think that the navy on the left was key and he could have done it from there. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below and while you're down there, please don't forget to like subscribe and obey because I am the Commissar, I will see you next time.